This week's Sign MPI brought to you by DigiKey Nate Fruit is? It's from ST. Um, we've got uh, another one of the ST sensors, and this is one that's actually available in stock. Uh, ST makes a lot of sensors. I like to sprinkle them throughout the year because uh, I don't like to have only one vendor, but um, they do make amazing time of flight sensors. Uh, so this week's uh, product is the um, VL53L5CX. Now, ironically, um, the actual sensor does not have that printed on it so nicely, um, but that is the, the part number. And this may sound familiar because um, ST has made a lot of sensors in this family called, um, uh, I think, the Flight Sense family of time of flight sensors. Um, so um, the way it works is inside is, you know, an infrared. Uh, laser and it actually like literally bounces light off an object and measures how much time it takes to get back. Um, and they started with like the VL6180, uh, which, you know, I think was about like a meter distance max. And then um, they had the uh, VL53L0X, the 53L1X, um, the 53LCX, and then now the VL53L5CX. This is the five, and four was the three, four was the one, four was zero. So it's like the number is incrementing, and they skipped four. Why? I don't know. Um, but um, this version of the sensor, um, it's the same idea. It does uh, distance uh, measurements using time of flight. But one thing that's kind of, um, oh, sorry, this is the um, showing, you know, that it measures uh, photon distance. Um, but what's really neat about um, the v 53 VL5 is that um, it now has a, a matrix of, of eight by eight that it can use to do, um, you know, like LIDAR in, in two dimensional space, not just point. So if you see here the history of, of these chips, um, starting with the, the 6180, and we have breakouts for, you know, all the early ones. Um, you know, as they got better and better, the distance got better. So 20 centimeters to 80 centimeters to 200 to 400. Um, and then with the VL53LX, um, it does multi-target or multi-zone detection. Um, so what does that mean? Um, okay, so go to the next slide. Um, you can see kind of at the bottom right is the multi-zone distance detection. So you can basically, instead of just having a single point of light that you like throw at the whatever object you're bouncing off of, which is how all the other sensors work, they were a single point distance sensor, it'll actually split up the field of view, which is about 60 degrees, into a four by four or eight by eight grid, um, and then tell you the distances for all of those um, items. Now, it's not going to be as fast, because it's going to, it actually does like, you know, it's usually 60 hertz, and I think it actually does one 60 hertz measurement time, either four by four or eight by eight. But it's kind of cool, because you actually kind of get like a grid of measurements, and you can do stuff like gesture sensing, or like um, object detection. You can do some basic machine learning on it um, because you get many more points of data. Um, you can, uh, you know, showing here um, the, the eight by eight grid and the distance. So you can start doing things like, you know, if your hand is going back and forth, not just up and down, or if it's moving in a circle. Um, I have a demo I'll show, you know, kind of what the, the quality is, although I think, you know, we can do more filtering on it. Um, but uh, it, it, it actually works. Like you can get data and um, across, again, a range of up to uh, four meters, 400 centimeters for each data point in the eight by eight grid. Um, and this is what it looks like. Um, you know, you can do four by four, you can do eight by eight. I didn't try four by four, I've only tried eight by eight. Why would you do four by four? It's much faster um, because you don't have to measure as many data points. So, you, you know, you pick the which one you want. What I like about um, ST is they're now releasing an ultralight driver for their sensors. So this is a sensor that's actually quite easy to port to a microcontroller. You can port it, you know, people port it to Arduino. You can port it to, um, you know, whatever chipset you want. Um, historically, it's been very hard to get drivers that weren't tied specifically to whatever chipset and IDE um, the company wants to use. So if it's like NXP, it'll only work with MCU Expresso. And then if it's, you know, Atmel or Microchip, it'll only work with, um, you know, Atmel Studio or the, or the PIC IDE or MP IDE. But what's nice is um, this driver is completely agnostic and you can use it with GCC or Keel or whatever you want. Um, all you have to do is implement the I squared C 
uh, and GPIO um, data rights and I think like a delay and it'll actually do the rest of it, which is pretty cool. We even uh, designed a breakout, although it's not done yet. Um, but um, it wasn't too hard to put it together. Again, the pinouts are, even though it's not physically the same size as the VL53 L1 or L0, um, the pinouts are very similar. Like the, the overall design is not that much different. Um, they did add a um, I squared C uh, low power, like I squared C reset, that's the I reset pin. Um, and that's to allow people, one of the things that has always been a little annoying is there's a fixed I squared C address and there's no um, I squared C address jumpers. And if you want to have like a bunch of these, you can hook them up on the same bus and um, put them into reset, like all but one put it into reset and you can reset it into a new I squared C address. Um, but it always meant you had to like physically like actually reset the whole thing. Now there's just I squared C reset. So it's a little easier to just turn off only the I squared C section without having to um, turn off the whole chip because it does take a couple seconds to boot. And best of all, it's in stock. Available on DigiKey, 257 when I checked. Um, 957. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, 957. So there's quite a few. Yeah. Um, pick them up. They also have some dev kits. Um, I'll show off. I got like little breakout boards, but they also have Nucleo, um, you know, add-ons for for ST development boards. You want to show your demo? Yeah, I'll show the demo. So this is the. Um, Uh, so this is the, I got two breakout boards because I'm smart, I always get, sorry, I actually came with two breakout boards um, in this little kit. This one's nice because it just gives you the sensor here as you can see, um, and then a bunch of pins, and then like I, I think this is a 2.8 volt LDO um, soldered on, and um, the uh, you can even kind of see this blinking here, that's the time of flight uh, laser, uh, you know, coming out um, from the from the sensor. And then, you know, it's diffraction graded into the 4x4, 8x8. Um, do you want to move this over here? So this is a clue board. And I'll say, like, I think this needs a little bit more work. This is, like, me spending, like, you know, a couple hours on it only. Um, you know, it definitely, um, if I put my hand and then I tilt my hand, you can see the tilt of the hand does, you know, change the gradient from, you know, being light on. Hold on, I can. There you go. I can, if I tilt my hand, it does, you know, it does do um, some detection. What would be really good, I think, to do next is um, I want to do some bipolar um, uh, interpolation, um, just like we did with our thermal cameras. Um, but you, I can see how you can do like gesture sensing uh, recognition. And they also have a video on um, using this for water level sensing. Apparently, that's, that's good, another yeah. really good use. If you don't want to actually dunk something in water, yeah. um, you can just have this because it, it can do four or eight meters. Some of the versions of this chip can do eight meters. Um, so that's this chip. So, you know, basically the, the upshot is it's a, very similar to the previous 53L1Xs, but it now does this eight by eight grid. Um, so you can use it as like a micro LIDAR for, you know, robotics applications or gesture recognition. All right, and that's this week's Eye on MPI. Yay. Eye on MPI.